We've got news on a possible vaccine, maybe more coming. We got treatment news as well. Markets rallied to begin the week, but have the the vaccine gains, if you want to call them that, have they already been made or do you and your team see more upside for equities? Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me this early morning. Look, we think that the vaccine news really in many ways is a game changer because we are going to have a bit of an air pocket coming up with some of the COVID cases and some of the resulting economic activity resulting from it. I mean, we were hoping we're not going to have any kind of restrictions in regions or cities, but we could, and we're starting to see it here in New York City as well. We think that the markets are going to be really strong going into 2021. The stars are really aligned here for great market performance. When you think about the amount of stimulus, both fiscal and monetary, already in the system and we're getting a cyclical recovery, there's a light at the end of this COVID tunnel. And that light at the end of the tunnel is going to help support the market going forward. We're not concerned about rising yields here. The steepening of the yield curve is a healthy thing. Yeah, it might be, Chuck, except for maybe names that rely on high dividends, names I know you like, like utilities and others that are kind of de facto bonds. As yields rise, do bonds reduce the attractiveness of some of these dividend-heavy sectors? Well, you got to remember that the rise that we've seen in yields is pretty small. It's, uh, you know, we're, we've gotten used to uh, very small changes in yields. And so uh, the, the rise in yields is not what really matters is uh, uh, like the other guest said, it has to do with what happens on the coronavirus and stimulus front. We we feel that uh, the coronavirus situation uh, has not been resolved. It's going to take longer than people expect, and we're really worried about small business here and whether uh, the, the small business sector can recover and all the employment that comes with it. Yes, yeah, certainly. But how does that change, if at all, Chuck, sort of your investment strategy? How do we allocate our money right now, given what we know and what we still don't know? Well, we, we think uh, at iSectors, we're really focused on not losing money as opposed to try to figure out how to outperform the market. And right now, uh, we think that there's a significant chance we're going to have uh, a big volatility here. Uh, we're going to have a, a tremendous amount of news, both on the election front and the uh, the COVID front going forward here in the next few months. And we rather uh, stay to the side and stay in sectors where there's earnings visibility, uh, including technology and utilities. Yeah, I mean, and, and listen, nobody, Alicia, is sugarcoating over what's going on. I mean, you, you look here, some of the, the, the case numbers are up, hospitalizations in many states are up. Europe is going through it worse than we are in many countries like Italy with, with a number of negative outcomes but the market is able to see past this. Is that kind of where we are that in, in many ways, as hard as the next few months may be in parts of this country and around the world, that for the market, it kind of is springtime? So look, we do think there's a bit of an air pocket coming up at the end of Q4 and early Q1. We would have liked to have seen stimulus come in and sign before the election because now it's become a political football, which is not terrific. And that adds to the air pocket risk. And the VIX has already come down. So you're really set up for everything going rosy. But we do think that ultimately the market is going to look through it because the recovery now, the probability of recovery is higher than expected than it was even just three or four weeks ago because of the existence of vaccines that if the data hold are 90 percent effective. And that's a huge game changer, not just that we have a vaccine, but the efficacy looks so much better than expected. In terms of sectors, we think that the cyclical trade here is going to hold for a while as yields as the yield curve steepens. However, however, we think ultimately in the long run that the tech sector and the growth stocks are going to reassert late leadership only yeah. because these are the these are the stocks that can grow on their own and have such wind at their backs regardless of where the economy is. You know, Alicia, I'll stick with you because I know that, listen, we, I'm going to knock us a little bit. We in the financial media, we always need to have a reason for things. Stocks go up on vaccine hopes. Stocks go up as earnings rise. The reality is this, and I'm going to tell all of our viewers a dirty little secret at 5, 10 in the morning. Stocks don't go up on any of that. Stocks go up because more people want to own them than want to sell them. That's pretty much it. Now, the reasons for that do vary. But if somebody said, what's the main reason to be bullish longer term? I would say there's what, Alicia? 
four to five trillion dollars in cash sitting around making negative squat, if that's a term, due to inflation, and it needs a home. Is that the biggest bull case we could make right now? Two, two big cases. One, investors are conservatively positioned and bearishly positioned, as you point out, on the cash. And two, negative real yields push everybody into equities because you don't earn much in your bond market. You're, you lose money on, on an inflation-adjusted basis in the bond market right now, given where yields and inflation expectations are. Yeah, yeah, and Chuck, that's kind of what you said, right? You said the goal right now is maybe to not lose money, but if I have money in, in cash, I am, with inflation, losing money. What's a good hedge, if anything, for that? Or are you buying gold? Are you buying Bitcoin? Where are you keeping that cash? Well, besides the sectors that I talked about in the equity market, uh, we still are uh, positive on gold, uh, given the uh, uh, negative uh, real rates. Uh, we think people should buy gold e ETFs um, uh, and and with those uh, that money be able to uh, hide until uh, we get through this volatility that we're going to see over uh, the coming uh, three to six months. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.